We covered the work kinetic energy theorem relatively quickly, and so I want to go back to it to review what that looked like, because that's the starting point for the next topic that we're going to cover. So recall that for particles, we have the relationship that the external work that is done on a particle or system of particles is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of those particles. Okay, and specifically, um, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Um, and we also had a formula for um, rigid body rotation, so we can also have plus one half i omega squared um, in those cases as well. So it's not quite particles, but the, the rule still works. Um, and then for a couple of specific cases, we were able to calculate the work in a straightforward way. So for constant forces, such as gravity, we have that the work is equal to the force times the displacement times cosine theta. Okay, so um, in the case of um, gravity, that's going to be um, mg times the change in height of that object. Um, we also had um, a formula for springs. Um, and the work done by a spring was equal to one half k x i squared minus one half k x f squared. So x was the um, displacement of the end of the spring, k is a property of the spring, um, and so this was a way that we could calculate how much work a spring does based on the endpoints of the spring. Um, so putting these together, we can actually solve a lot of problems without having to resort to vectors. So one of the things that's really nice is we don't have to draw free body diagrams, we don't have to worry about splitting things into components. Um, all we have to do is identify the types of energy um, and any work that's done, and that gives us um, an ability to solve certain things. Um, it doesn't allow us to solve everything. If it did, then we wouldn't have bothered with forces and free body diagrams and stuff. But it does give us a framework to solve a lot of problems in a pretty straightforward way. Um, one of the things that can be kind of tricky about work is that work can be positive, negative, or zero. So if external work done on a particle is positive, if it's greater than zero, that means that you're adding kinetic energy. And if the work done on a particle or system of particles is less than zero, that means you're removing kinetic energy. Okay. Um, and in a lot of cases also, the work can be equal to zero, which means that the kinetic energy is going to stay the same. 